Good morning and thanks everybody for coming. I'm sorry we're running a bit behind schedule. We had some technical issues. And we have a, a, a big panel today and a lot to get through. I'll just give you an idea of an overview of the plan for today. So I'm just going to brief you on revenue plans as they currently are for Dublin Port. Then Steve from Time IT is going to discuss some of the assistance that his software can bring to the table. Uh, Mick and Deirdre from Skillnet will give a presentation on the schemes that they have available. Um, Ronan from Agriculture will talk about the agricultural issues that we're facing. And then we have Tanya from HMRC who will be talking about how the UK customs are going to operate post-Brexit. So we'll take a break then, a 10 minute break or so, just so people can use the bathroom or whatever they need to do. And then we have Ian from DEFRA, which is ag in the UK, will give us a presentation. Then Olivier has come over from France to talk about the Calais side of things. And we have Dimitri from Belgium to talk about uh, the Belgian, UK Belgian operations. So we've a lot to get through and uh, we'll try and kick off now. Just to put the whole thing back in context, um, I don't plan to repeat all we did in, at the last meeting that we had, but just to remind ourselves, we're looking at 13-fold increase on import declarations or customs declarations post-Brexit, going from 1.6 million to 20 million. We're looking at an increase in transits from 40,000 to 4 million, which is a 100-fold increase. And we're looking at safety and security declarations going from 100,000 to 25 million. And this is an area that we're not really familiar with, I would say, by and large, because we haven't been involved in doing safety and security declarations. And at the last meeting, there was a little bit of, of uh, confusion, let's put it that way, as to whether we would be doing them or not, because technically it's the responsibility of the carrier to make the safety and security declaration. But as it's transpired, the way the system has been structured now, it is going to fall on us in the main to make these safety and security declarations. And that's one of the reasons why we have Time IT here to, to show us, to give us a demo on the ICS system so that we can get more familiar with it. So the revenue, just to go through, we had a meeting with Revenue about two weeks ago and they explained to us what their plans are, mainly for Dublin Port, um, but it would apply as well for general traffic from the UK going into Ross there also. So as before, they say they're, they're there to facilitate trade. They want to facilitate the flow of legitimate trade through the ports while meeting their EU obligations. They will chase the ferry companies. So when a ferry sails, they have to get an electronic manifest, they're calling it NIMS. So if the manifest doesn't arrive at customs automatically, they're going to make a call to the ferry company to make sure that the manifest is sent to them. If a truck misses a ferry, they will have a manual system where they can intervene so that that truck doesn't necessarily get routed as red and have to go for a call to customs. That is really a case now where it's kind of a, an accidental, you know, maybe bad traffic on the motorway or whatever prevents the truck making the ferry. It's not one where we can kind of opt, you know, take advantage of a situation, say, oh, we'll book it on this ferry in the hope we might make it, never really been certain that it would, and then just think it's going to roll on to the next one. This is a very important point. Customs intervention will commence on receipt of documents from the trade. So when something goes orange or something goes red, they are geared up now for 24-7 operations. And their expectation is that we in the market are going to do the same. So it's quite a challenge that you're going to have to think about when you're taking on customs clearance as to whether you're going to be in a position to support customs and their requirements for immediate transmission of the documents. They're going to be available. If a boat comes in at 5 a.m. and it roots orange, they're going to be available and expect to get the, that documentation from you quarter past five. The ferry operator's responsibility. At check-in, they must ensure that the drivers present the required RM, MRNs. So for an outbound load, there is one MRN, outbound being outbound from Ireland. So there's one MRN being an export declaration. For an inbound load coming into Ireland, there are two MRNs. The two MRNs being the ICS or ENS declaration, safety and security declaration, and the import declaration. So we must have the import declaration uploaded on the system with an MRN assigned to it so we can communicate that back to the hauler. Otherwise, he will not get into the port in the UK. 
There are exceptions. So the exceptions will relate to, you know, maybe temporary imports or carnets or other documents. Revenue are drafting a list of what the exceptions might be so that the ferry operators will understand them. So in the main, for the ordinary business, there will be two MRNs, your safety and security and your import declaration required at the time in order to allow access to the port. At ramp up, the ferry operator has to submit the NIMS manifest to revenue. If, as we said earlier, if customs don't get it, if revenue don't get the NIMS, they will chase the ferry operator to send the NIMS to them. 30 minutes out from arrival, now there's an issue here about checking, and it'll, we'll explain a little bit more. Um, but the idea will be that the, that the driver will be able to check his status while he's on the vessel. Two hours before the vessel arrives, customs are going to start processing the declarations. So 30 minutes before the vessel arrives, they want the drivers to start checking to see are they green or red rooted. Mainly for the drivers, it's going to be green or red to keep it simple. We know there's an orange in there as well, but it just is to allow a driver to know whether they can immediately exit the port or not. They ideally want that to happen while on board the vessel so that the driver can move smoothly and quickly out of the port area and not cause any delay or congestion. De declarance responsibility. This, of course, is the biggest list because it's our list. <coughs> so we have to notify the relevant agency of SPS loads 24 hours in advance. So again, a lot of planning is going to have to take place, a lot more probably than what we're currently used to with UK loads coming in. If you have a, a, a load that requires SPS inspection, you have to notify it 24 hours in advance, and you need to know what ferry you're coming on at that stage. So again, you're going to have to think about, it, about your operations and how you currently manage those loads. We have to submit customs declarations in a timely manner. Basically what they're saying is, they need the customs declarations in advance of you or your load getting to the port in the UK. Otherwise, you're not getting on board the vessel. Provide MRNs to the relevant agency. So again, if, if it's a, an SPS load, you need to make sure that they're aware of the MRN. Provide MRNs to the haulier driver in advance. So the driver must be able to prove to the ferry operator that he has two MRNs. We will be giving the, the ferry operator samples of uh, documents so that they can glean from that the type of number that they should expect or the type of data that they should expect to receive. But your driver will have to have it. Now, when it's coming from the UK, it does not have to be a machine readable form because they're not scanning the MRNs as such coming onto the boat. But they will need to have the MRN available to them. And it's going to need to be intelligible and it's going to need to look right. So, you know, the, the ferry companies will be relying on us to give them correct information. It's up to us to make sure we're communi communicating it well to the drivers. Um, you know, we need to know that they have a proper number available to them and not something garbled. If they haven't got the right number, then they're not going to get on board the vessel. <coughs> Where goods are under transit, the TAD must accompany the load. So the, trans the transit accompanying document must be with the load if you're under transit. Now that is a machine readable form and if you're going back out of Ireland, if you're, when you're exporting from Ireland, if you're under transit, that TAD will be scanned. So that needs to be a good quality copy so that the barcode can be scanned by a barcode reader. It's not something that can be handwritten. You need to have the TAD with the load so that they can scan it. Ensure supporting documents are available. So again, if you think a load might go orange, and we know the types of loads that do go orange, make sure you have all the paperwork for them because customs will expect to see them uploaded quickly after the routing goes orange. We can't pre-upload them because you know, we need that routing to come back first and then we upload the documents. But you need to make sure you have all the documents available to you. Original health certs must accompany SPS loads. There is no ship's bag. So don't think that you're going to hand in a health cert to the ferry operator in Hollyhead and you're going to get the health cert coming out at this side if it's not a company load. It may not happen. And if it does not happen, you're in deep trouble because now your original health cert is gone. So you have to think about how you're going to manage the health certs. You need to have them available in Dublin in original format. Where orange or red routing submits supporting documents to revenue ASAP. 
It doesn't say send them the documentation two days after the load comes in. It's ASAP. They do not want loads clogging up the key at Dublin Port. So there will be pressure on to make sure that we're adhering to this and moving freight out of the port as quickly as possible. 30 minutes out, the truck driver must be made aware of the routing. So that's either us making him aware or his employer making him aware. There is also a web portal which is under test with revenue at the moment where a driver can log on with his truck reg or trailer number and vessel details and will get the routing that he has. It's in test mode at the moment. So the responsibility currently will be with us most likely to make sure that the, the haulier or the driver knows what his routing is. If he's directed to T7, then he needs to know what he's going there for. If he's orange routed or if he's red routed, he needs to be able to explain to him why he's arriving at T7. Ensure the driver has a working mobile phone for receiving text. So that's up to the haulier. But he has to make sure that the driver can receive text. Ideally, a smartphone so that they can display PDFs with barcodes on it, but at least a phone that's working, that they have it charged, and that they're going to be able to receive text. Driver haul your responsibilities. Outbound from Ireland prior to check in, he needs his MRM for the export declaration, so that's going to come from us in the main. Or if he's on transit, he needs to have the TAD. Now, if you, if, if you open a transit, or if you create a transit and don't open it at an ACR, it's going to have to be opened by customs at the customs house. So you'll have to call into customs to make sure you can get that transit opened as such. You have to allow the extra time, and the haulier has to know that he needs to put in that extra time to allow for the fact there could be a queue there, there could be you know, quite a few trucks trying to get transits done or dealing with other issues. So you need to allow extra time for him to open the transit. If you've opened the transit, then he must have the TAD with him, and that will be scanned at Dublin Port. So it needs to be in machine-readable form that the barcode can be scanned correctly. Again, the exception handling, that would relate to you know, whether it's a carne or some other unusual customs procedure taking place. Inbound from the UK, prior to checking, the haulier must make sure he has the MRNs, both for the import and for the safety and security. We call it ENS, it's also called ICS, and it's called safety and security. Those three acronyms are interchangeable. MRNs for the transit for declaration and, and EMS. If, if he's under transit, then he needs the MRN for the transit. Ideally, he should have a TAD with him. Um, if not, I think he, they will probably accept because they're kind of geared up to accepting um, a declaration of what the MRN number is in the UK. So if you have the MRN number, it probably will be okay. Particularly if you're at Hollyhead, if you get into Dover, you're going to have to scan your transit. But when you're coming to Hollyhead, you won't be scanning it necessarily. But you'll have to be able to give the number to the ferry operator. And again, exception handling where there's a different customs procedure in place. 30 minutes from arrival, you can, he can start checking his routing on the revenue portal. Hopefully, it'll be up and running for the, for the 1st of November. 30 minutes before arrival, the driver with a smartphone will be able to log on to a, a revenue portal and see what his routing is. He then needs to follow the routing in, indicator. Now, they have put in that this applies to both accompanied and unaccompanied loads. We need to flesh that out a little bit more with, with revenue over time as to how it's going to operate with unaccompanied loads. But if they're staffing up their office down there out of normal hours with a quantity of staff in the expectation of a workload, then they will want to see that workload arriving at their door. They won't want to see it arriving at their door two days later or 20, you know, five hours later. Their expectation is that they're going to have a flow of examinations to conduct within a reasonable period of time. Now, there will be some sizing going on, I reckon, as we get into the system to see how many driver company loads are coming in that are going for exam, how many on a company loads may be going for exam. So there may be a bit of, of uh, sizing, as I say, where customs may have you know, 10 people, it might go up to a dozen people, it might cut back down to eight people. We'll have to wait and see. But their expectation is that we are going to react positively to them, react, to them working 24-7. A red call to customs, you have to go to T7, that's just a given. All live animals must go to the BCP. 
So again, smartphone. Drivers need to have smartphones. They need to have access to a smartphone. It needs to be charged. It needs to be capable of displaying a PDF so that a barcode can be read off it. And they need to be able to get their routing flags. So that's kind of the basics of what the routing is going to look like for a driver at the moment. They'll have one or, or one of two options as such. They're going to get a green flag, which says go, or they're going to get a red flag, which says customs. So the red flag for us applies to orange routers and red routers. And the green obviously means that they're free to go. So they're trying to keep it simple because we understand that not all drivers are English speaking or, or wouldn't be their first language. So we, they want to keep a simple communication process there. If that works, it can take some pressure off us from the point of view we don't have to be there to send the routings down for the green loads. But you will have to be available to take a phone call when it, something goes orange or red. So you may have to go to bed with your mobile phone beside you. Potential issues and resolution. So, what can go wrong? Almost nothing. Well, a truck travels on a different ferry to that declared on a customs declaration. That can happen. That can happen, you know, the vessel could be full, you might get shunted onto a different boat, you might want to wait for the next ship that's, you know, with that particular ferry company, so he goes with Irish ferries instead of Stena or whatever. If there's a mismatch in truck movement details, which could result in a call to customs. Customs have a manual workaround process to take care of that. But it's going to be an exception, not the rule. So if you're consistently coming along saying, oh, I booked my trailer on the 8 a.m. Stena and it didn't get off until it went on the Irish ferries at 10 o'clock, they're not going to be best pleased. So they don't want, when you see manual intervention, you can take it that they want to do that the minimum number of times possible. So ideally, we're going to get it right more times than wrong. Incorrect registration number or trailer ID provided in customs declaration. That again will cause a mismatch, which will cause a call to customs. And here you can see that their attitude is a little bit different. Declaring to have a governance process in place to ensure, ensure accuracy of data. So we can't casually put a truck number or a trailer number down against a load and think we're going to get away with it. If you do it once, okay. If you do it twice, I guess you're going to get a call. If you do it a third time, I guess they're going to come out and say, listen guys, what's going on here? You should have a governance policy in place to make sure you're giving us the right data. No customs declaration. No matching truck movement details which will result in a call to customs. This isn't a may result in a call to customs. This will result in a call to customs. And the declarant is to adhere to the timelines for submissions of declarations. Now you can be sure of one thing. That one will precipitate a serious call from customs to your office. That's not going to be just a phone call to say, hey guys, what's going on? This is crucial to them that every, vessel, that every truck has its declarations in place before it gets on board the vessel. I guess the ferry operators might also be getting a call as to how he got on board the vessel, but we certainly will be getting a call as to how we allow the haulier to get to a port without having a declaration in place for him. Incorrect registration number or trailer ID provided on customs declaration. Again, it's going to cause a mismatch, which may result in a call to customs. And there they're saying, right, we need to communicate the requirements to the ACE. So they're not quite as uh, animated. So, you know, there could be an error that might have caused that one. You know, maybe a mistype in a trailer ID or something. So not quite so, so animated about that. But no customs declaration or an incorrect registration trailer ID those are going to be serious offences from a customs point of view. To give you an idea of the port, the red box, that's the animal inspection point. Uh, we have T9, T7 and T10. T9 is where we're going for... Um, oh. Right, so that's, that's the BCP. You can, see, I just say, you can see here the way they're trying to set up these... Um, they're like toll booths, so trucks will be queuing up to go through toll booths. Um, they will have them flagged for different lanes. The idea would be that a guy would understand that if he's, if he's under transit, that he'll follow a particular lane to get to the transit zone. If he's for examination, he'll follow a different lane to get to the examination zone. They're trying, they're trying to make it um, as foolproof as possible, but the problem is that time is short. 
So a certain amount in the early days is going to be a little bit ad hoc, um, but as time goes by, uh, if they get to what, the, what, what they used to call central case, which would be October 2020, they will have proper lanes flagged and, and good signage in place. Uh, this is T7, there's three hectares of vehicle space there for documentation and seal checks. So a lot of the vehicles will go to T7 first um, for a seal check or for a documentation check. And from there then they may go on to, um, to T9 or, T10 or to T10 for a full examination. Uh, T10 would be Mick McQuaid's or McQuaid O'Flanagan's warehouse as was. That's now taken over. So if a truck gets green routed out of the port, he can just go straight out. He doesn't have any issues. Uh, and just as a, a nod to Ross Lair, I know we have some people here from Ross Lair today, just so you know we didn't ignore you. Um, Revenue did give us a map for Ross Lair port. This is the area where all the orange and red examinations will be taking place. So just to summarize it again, the challenge for us is huge. And we've been arguing with revenue or, and with government really that we need a support package put in place to help us to prepare for Brexit. Realistically now, Brexit may happen on the 31st of October. We don't know. We're kind of in the, in the Donald Rumsfeld territory of we have no unknowns, no unknowns, and unknown unknowns. And a known unknown currently is we don't know when Brexit is going to happen. So we have to prepare. Government did put a fund in place. It's been administered through uh, Skillnet, and that is there to help us train people and encourage us to train people and recruit people to have them available to cope with the workload. I'm reminded in a way of, um, we have a, an Irish rugby team in Japan currently, and a number of years ago we had an Irish soccer team in Japan, and a very famous Cork man made a statement, he says, and I can't do a Cork accent, so I won't try. If you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. We are not in the position of failing to prepare. We must prepare to succeed. So I encourage you all, engage with Skillnet, look at recruiting, look at training, and make sure we are ready to go. This will not be a disaster for this country if we adhere to the processes that Revenue have outlined. Because 80% plus of the loads will move, will move freely through the port. There will be 20% will be going for exam <coughs> for various reasons. But the 80% can move. But if we don't get our acts together, then the 80% will not be moving. <coughs> and then there will be a problem for the economy. So I urge us all to engage. Engage with skill net, engage with training, and let's get ourselves ready. <coughs>